Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Um, today we're going to talk about nematodes, but before starting the video, I have got a good news for you. And that is I've uploaded parasitology handouts on my YouTube channel. You can find its link in the about tab, in the community tab, or in the description of this video. This video is a continuation of the parasitology series, especially the nematode series, and this is the first video on nematode series. I'll be making other videos on that series uh, sooner. Before getting into the video, I'd like to tell that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. These are parasitic roundworms, also known as nemathelminthes. The word nemata means thread, so these are thread-like organisms. Nematodes have separate genders. One is male and one is female. We will talk about them in detail in the morphology section. Lecture outline. I've introduced you guys to the nematodes and I'll talk about the classification of parasite so we can know under which category of parasite nematodes come. Then we will talk about classification of nematodes, their morphology, epidemiology, hosts, transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis, diagnosis, and finally the treatment. Parasite. As we all know, that it is an organism that needs other organisms for its survival. It is further classified as protozoa, for example, Antamoeba histolytica, and helminths, for example, Diphilobotrium latum. Helminths are further classified as platy helminthes. These are flate worms, for example, Tinea saginata and nematodes, the nemat helminthes. These are also termed as round worms, for example, Wuchereria bancrofti. We are going to talk about them in today's video. Platy helminthes, the flat worms, are further classified as cestodes, the tapeworms, for example, Tinea saginata, and trematodes, the flukes, for example, Schistosoma. Nematodes, these are further classified as intestinal nematodes and tissue nematodes. Let's talk about them. As you can see in the picture on the left side that these are the intestinal nematodes and on the right side these are the tissue nematodes. Intestinal nematodes are further classified as Enterobius vermicularis, Trichurus trichuria, Ascaris lumbricoides, Ankylostoma and Nicator americanus, Strongyloides thocoralis, Trichinella spiralis. And the tissue nematodes are further classified as Wuchereria, or in some places it is pronounced as Wuchereria, but I'll go with Wuchereria. So it is Wuchereria bancrofti. That then the Oncocerca vulgulus, uh, Loa Loa, and finally the Reconculus medinensis. I know that the names of these nematodes are harder to remember, so I've got an easy way for you. Let's remember this with a mnemonic. For intestinal nematodes, we have yeast. E is for Enterobius vermicularis. It is also termed as pinworm. A is for Ascaris lumbricoides. It is also called as giant roundworm. Another A is for Ankylostoma and Nicator americanus. Uh, these are the two hookworms. The S is for Strongyloides tocoralis. It is small roundworm. T is for Trichinella spiralis. It is also called as Trichina worm. And finally, we got the Trichurus trichuria. It is named as whipworm. Uh, it is named after its shape because it resembles the shape of the whip. That's why it is called as whipworm. For tissue nematodes, the mnemonic is delta worms. As we all know that there are delta waves in science that we study, but uh, I made this mnemonic for this because these are worms and uh, they were having the spelling similar to delta except uh, some words. So these are the delta worms. W is for Wuchereria bancrofti. O is for Oncocerca volvulus. D is for Dracunculus meninensis. These three are the filarial worms. We'll talk about them in detail in their morphology. L is for Loa Loa. T is for Toxocara larvae. A is for Ankylostoma larvae. We have got two other larvae, but in some books, the Toxocara and Ankylostoma uh, larvae, these are included in the nematodes whose larvae are responsible for causing diseases. The two are Anisakis and Angiostrongulus. Morphology. Shape. Nematodes are round. That's why these are called as roundworms. 
with a cylindrical body. They are unsegmented. They don't have segments like those of the tapeworms. Size. They vary in size from microscopic to macroscopic. For example, as carries lumbricoides, it varies in size from 20 to 25 centimeters. It is a macroscopic nematode. Let's talk about the internal structure of the nematode first, and we'll look at its outer surface. As we've talked that nematodes are roundworms with a cylindrical body. They have a complete digestive tract, including a mouth and an anus. They have two separate genders, as I've talked about that in the introduction. One is male and the other one is female. Female is larger as compared to male, and the male typically has a cold tail outer surface. Body is covered with a cuticle. What is a cuticle? Cuticle is a non-cellular, highly resistant coating that covers the body of the nematode. Let's see its structure. As you can see that this outer surface is covered with a cuticle that is non-cellular and highly resistant coating. As I mentioned a bit earlier that it has a full digestive tract, a complete digestive tract, including a mouth and an anus. So you can visualize the esophagus there. Then we got a nerve ring, it's esophageal gland. Um, we've got its intestines. As this is a female a nematode, it has got an ovary, uterus, eggs in the uterus, vagina. This is its anus and this is its tail. Before talking further about the morphology of the nematode, I want to tell you that there are certain stages that exist in the life cycle of a nematode and these stages have certain morphology so we'll talk about that a bit later right now we should know what are the stages first one is egg second one is larva third one is adult now we'll talk about the morphology of larval forms first we'll talk about the intestinal worms then we'll move towards the tissue worms Intestinal worms have two larval forms. First one is rhabditiform larvae. It is first and second stage larvae. It is non-infectious and feeding form. The other one is filariform. It is infectious and non-feeding form. Larval forms of tissue nematodes, as I told you that we will talk about the Wuchereria, Onchocerca, and Loa. These are actually the filarial worms because they produce motile embryos called microfilariae in the blood and tissue fluids. Now let's talk about this diagram. It is all about how the organism gets converted from the adult, then to eggs, then to larvae, then again into adult. The adult will reproduce and it will release eggs. The eggs on embryonation will be converted into embryonated eggs. In the embryonated eggs, we have certain structures like polar plug, lipid layer, this one, and we've got this chitin layer. And inside the egg, it is a larva. On hatching, a uh, larva will be released out of the egg and it will grow and molt. Um, you know what is actually molting? This worm has a layer that we talked, uh, the non-cellular highly resistant coating on its outer surface. Um, it will produce a new layer and will share this layer and then this larva will get converted means it will get mature and will convert it into adult form. The adult will again release eggs and the process will be continued. Epidemiology. Infections caused by nematodes are endemic worldwide but some are common especially in tropics in Asia, Africa, US, Japan and Central America. Uh, intestinal nematode infections are most prevalent in Asia. Trichuriasis is one of the most prevalent infections worldwide, most abundantly in warm, moist areas. Hosts. As adult nematodes live in the human body except for Strongyloides tocorallis because it lives in the soil. Nematodes or roundworms are found in fresh water, soils and marine habitats. A fourth species is the guinea worm, Dracunculus, whose larvae inhabit tiny crustaceans, the coppods. Although numerous nematodes infect humans, some spend most of their life cycle in the bowel. Lumen, the human bowel lumen, guys. Transmission, ingesting the eggs via contaminated food or water. Interrobius, trichurus, and Ascaris are transmitted by ingestion of eggs. Other intestinal nematodes are transmitted by ingestion of the larvae. These organisms are transmitted from person to person by blood-sucking mosquitoes or flies. A fourth species is the guinea worm. Dracunculus are ingested in drinking water. Life cycle. After infectious eggs have been ingested by a human, larvae emerge and move to the cecum. Here they molt. 
shed the outer layer and uh, synthesize a new one, embedding the epithelium of the intestine and mature into adults. Oviposition begins two to three months after infection. What is oviposition? It is egg-laying process. Adults live for one to three years. Female worms can produce up to 20,000 eggs per day. So Genesis, the nematode described above uh, can cause disease as a result of the presence of adult worms within the body. In addition, several species cannot mature to adults in human tissue, but their larvae can cause disease. There are three diseases. First is a serious disease. Secondly, we've got less serious and the third one is called as the third disease. Serious disease is termed as visceral larva migrant. It is caused primarily by the larva of dog Ascarid Toxocara canis. The less serious disease termed as cutaneous larva migrants is caused primarily by the larva of the dog and cat hookworm Ankylostoma caninum. And the third disease, anisakiasis, is caused by ingestion of anisakis larvae in raw seafood. In infections caused by certain nematodes that migrate through the tissue, for example, strongyloides, trichinella, ascaris, and two hookworms, the ankylostoma and Nicator americanus is striking, increasing the number of eosinophils. Eosinophilia occurs. Eosinophils do not ingest the organisms. Rather, they attach to the surface of the parasite via IgE and secrete cytotoxic enzymes contained within their eosinophilic granules. Host defenses against helminths are stimulated by interleukins, which are synthesized by Th2 subset of helper T cells. For example, the production of IgE is increased by interleukin 4 and the number of eosinophils is increased by interleukin 5. Cysteine protease is produced by the wombs to facilitate their migration through tissue are the stimuli for interleukin 5 production. What are the important things to remember there that interleukin-5 is responsible for increasing number of eosinophils and interleukin-4 is responsible for IgE production. Diagnosis. We will need samples of feces and blood to diagnose what actually is the worm responsible for causing this disease. Uh, mainly the diagnosis is clinical for uh, different uh, uh, nematodes, but uh, we can go for microscopy and under microscope we will visualize blood and fecal smears. Serologic tests are done for certain nematodes like trichinella uh, and uh, we will also go for skin biopsy because it's important in case of um, certain nematodes. Uh, for example, Onchocerca, and we will also count the number of eggs in feces, which is termed as fecal egg counts. Um, we will also look for eggs on the skin, which skin? The anal skin. Uh, that's why I've mentioned the eggs on skin under the heading fecal egg count, so you guys can remember actually which skin is that. Treatment. Treatment for intestinal nematodes is bendazole, but we can also use certain other drugs and in some cases we will not use any drug. And for tissue nematodes it is dialtylcarbamazine, but we can also prescribe bendazole along with other drugs and gradual extraction of worm can also be done for some of the tissue nematodes. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. So give this video a big, big thumbs up. Comment down below in the comment section. Do consider subscribing. And as always, don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram where I upload amazing infographics for you guys. For example, take this one where I uploaded resources for the subject surgery, which textbook you can use, which online resources like YouTube channels and websites to follow. Uh, which apps to consider and which flashcards you can use for this subject. I've got my Twitter and I rarely upload blogs, so do check them out. And uh, I've got Parasite and Nurse on my YouTube channel. That's a good news for you. And till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.